Wow, this honestly is an almost perfect, nearly perfect, lightweight family RV. Nearly. And the RV I'm talking about, the one we're standing in, is none other than the all-new 2024 East to West Silver Lake 18 BHLE. Let's start with the good about this RV because there is an absolute ton, and I mean a ton to love. Starting off with the bunks. Take a look at what we have right here. These are 50 by 68 inch double over double bunks. In a floor plan like this where it's a little bit smaller, it has a GVWR under 5,000 pounds. It's very rare to see double bunks. I like these because they're great for smaller kids and bigger kids, even adults. Plus, you have additional storage underneath. When we take a look at that space again, as a six foot adult, let me slide in here. If I curl up a little bit, I can actually make this work. That can't be said for a lot of other travel trailers in this space. Now, the reason we're able to have double bunks in here is because they use an eight foot wide body where a lot of them are going to be seven. The bigger part about having a wider body, not only does it allow you to have bigger bunks, it allows you to have a bigger bathroom. But before we go in, there's something I have to point out and that is the door itself. One, it goes the full length. I, I don't understand why manufacturers will have a, a big cutout here I'm using the bathroom. I don't want the gut out. That's not something I enjoy. The other thing I love, love this, is it's trimmed out in wood instead of plastic. You have no idea how many RV doors I've opened and they don't close. But look at this. It's square. It opens and closes just the way it should because it's actually trimmed out like you would have in a residential home. When we step foot into the bathroom because it is bigger, Look what that allows. It doesn't, it doesn't need much space, but allows you to put a sink in the bathroom. And again, a lot of these floor plans just don't have the space for it. So I'm super thrilled they were able to do that. If I take a seat on the toilet here, you know, it's a little tight on the knees, but again, very, very manageable. Of course, we have storage underneath the sink as well as a mirrored medicine cabinet. And another big feature you will notice in here is the control. That's for a tankless water heater. To have the tankless water heater, in this price point, that's pretty darn impressive. I'll take a step in the shower, look at this. This is another huge one. How often do you see this when you have a smaller RV that's under 5,000 pounds gross where you can fully stand up in the shower at six foot tall? I can do that because they maintained 81 inch ceiling heights in this RV. That is a huge advantage if you're one that's a little bit taller, you don't wanna have to constantly duck down. I personally love that feature. Now up front is something that people either love or hate, and that's the Murphy bed. In this particular floor plan, I think it's great. It gives you the additional seating straight across from the TV exactly where you want it, and it helps really open this space up, especially because this one has a slide out, which we'll see in a little bit. Now to drop this down into a bed, it's actually pretty simple. We're simply going to remove the back cushion here. We'll undo the latches. And fold out the bed. Now, to give you an idea of size, at six foot tall, I can actually get in here pretty well. It's not bad. You're a little bit taller, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, you may have an issue, but at six foot, I think this bed works pretty good. Beyond that, you also have great additional storage thanks to the wardrobe on the side, as well as up above the bed. Underneath the bench, you have big storage. However, it is taken up by the fresh water tank. But that's not a bad thing because that means if you're camping a little bit colder climates, less chance that your water is gonna freeze up on you. As mentioned, the TV hookups are right here directly across from that sofa, but you'll also have a good view to it from the dinette. As we can see, the dinette here is in a slide out. And the fact they're able to fit a slide in this camper and still be under 5,000 pound GVWR is amazing. And it's a big, a big slide too. Look at the size of this dinette. It's not something small where you're gonna be crushed. You can easily fit four people in here, maybe even three on each side if you have some kids. I love how big this is. You have USB ports, both A and USB-C on there, so a couple different options, and you get storage underneath the bench seats. And now let's get into the kitchen. Now in a smaller RV, this is always gonna be an issue just because you don't have a lot of space for a big countertop. But honestly, I think they did a pretty darn good job. First off, 
that you don't have T-mold. You're going to have a thermal form countertop, which is going to be an upgrade. Is it as nice as solid surface? No, of course not. But it's definitely better than T-mold, and it's a lot lighter than a solid surface, which is part of why it can stay under that 5,000 pound GVWR. Also, you have a two burner recessed cooktop with the glass cover sink over to the space or over to the side, but they actually give you prep space, which I certainly appreciate. The sink is a single basin. You can see that uh, square kind of deep, which is nice. And it has the high rise faucet. Again, nothing super mind blowing, but pretty darn good for the size. What is also impressive is the amount of storage they give you for such a small kitchen. You have storage up here by the microwave, pretty standard stuff, but if you take a look down below, they really optimize the space they give you. You have a drawer under the cooktop. You have three drawers that all open up. I mean, that is good space in all three of those. P-trap in this one, but the other two, fantastic, and you can definitely work around that trap. And take a look at this, underneath the refrigerator, you have a spot for pots and pans, and that is something that is generally lacking when you're looking at a smaller RV. The refrigerator is also nice and big too. Open that guy up, you can see this one is a 12 volt, plenty of space in there, especially for this size camper. Now, when it comes to the element, something else we often see with this size is they don't do very well. But that's not the case with the Silver Lake 18 BHLE. We saw the fresh tank was underneath the bed. They also have a furnace right down below. Some of them don't have a furnace, they have a fireplace, not the case here. You will stay nice and toasty. And on those hot days, you have a roof mounted AC to stay nice and cool. Again, we look at what you get, you look at the space, this thing is seriously near perfect. But as I mentioned, it does have a flaw. Let's go take a look outside. But that flaw is not construction. It's actually pretty well built for being an entry level RV. You have 17 inch tires with easy lube axles, a six inch I-beam frame, which again is pretty impressive for this size coach. The floor decking inside is 5 8 inch tongue and groove. You have the wood framing with aluminum siding. And then coming up to the roof, You'll have a TPO roof, which is generally considered an upgrade over EPDM or rubber. It's a little bit easier maintenance and has better UV resistance. And that roof is fully walkable with a ladder attachment, which we will see in the back. But alas, here is the major flaw. And no, I'm not talking about that the Murphy bed takes up some of your storage space because that's to be expected. The bigger issue, and as we get to look at it, I started to wonder is how did they get so much in a small RV? You have a slide out in there, you have an eight foot box, you have extra wide bunks, a sink in the bathroom, and it's all on a single axle. Well, it comes to the cost of carrying capacity. So when I looked into it, dry weight's right around 4,500 pounds, your GVWR is about 4,900. This one, as equipped, has a carrying capacity of 420 pounds. That's unfortunately just not a lot of stuff. So I wanna know, what's your opinion? Are, do you think that's enough? Do you pack light? Have you weighed? What is, your, what is your normal carry when you're going on a trip? I'm not saying it's a deal breaker, but it's definitely something you have to consider. It definitely has a ton inside. It has a ton going for it, but that weight could be limiting. As I said, it is very well built. Your features out here are pretty standard. Power awning, LED light strip, TV hookup. As we come around to the back, we'll see a leash latch in which you can hook up uh, any, if you have a pup or something that you have with you, have a spot to be able to tie them to, uh, to the RV right there. Propane quick connect in the back for a grill. And on the back is your backup camera as well as a attachment for the Lipper ladder system. So here's my take on this one. If you're able to pack light enough, I truly believe this is one of the best, most value-driven, affordable, and well-equipped, lightweight family RVs currently on the market. Now, if you can't travel light enough and you want something with the opposite problem that can probably carry way too much, then check out this next one. <laughs>